Shalom, Chesed, Uvuchim, Ubaim. I'm Alazur, Kabeza Perez, and welcome to another edition of Penine HaTorah, Pearls of Torah, with Yeshiva Shuvu. This week's Torah portion is found in the Book of Numbers, chapter 4, verse 21, through chapter 7, verse 89. Parashat Naso is continuing the theme of lifting up and carrying the leadership of Israel in order for them to be able to perform their functions and draw the rest of the people closer into Hashem. In last week's parasha, Bamidbar, the Torah states, Se'u et rosh kol adat b'nei Yisrael. Lift up or take a census of all of the leaders of the children of Israel. This word, Se'u, the root word, seen in Aleph, not only means to take a census, but to lift up or to carry. And in this week's Torah portion, Parashat Naso, it contains the same root word, this week specifically mentioning the different divisions of the Levites. And as we learned last week, the children of Israel are instructed to lift up their leadership and support their leadership in order for them to be able to perform their functions as leaders, drawing the children of Israel closer to Hashem. And so we have this example in chapter 7, beginning in verse 1 through 3, it says, Now it came to pass, when Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle, that he anointed it and consecrated it and all its furnishings, and the altar and all its utensils. So he anointed them and consecrated them. Then the leaders of Israel, the heads of their father's houses, who were the leaders of the tribes, and over those who were numbered, made an offering, and they brought their offering before Hashem. Hashem. So although they were not priests, they still had a function similar to the priests, in that the leaders of the children of Israel made offerings unto Hashem representing the divisions of the families of Israel that they were over. Sephorno comments on chapter 7 verse 2 saying that seeing they all occupied official positions the gift offering each one brought was on behalf of his tribe and its members a head representing the rest of the body. They did not only represent the members of the tribes but were princes in their own right. They agreed to stand in the breach, la amor baperets, and to bring near the korbanot, the communal offering, to obtain atonement on their behalf. So a leader is supposed to not only bring an offering and draw his people closer, but stand in the breach, stand in the gap. And we have an example of this through one of the greatest leaders the children of Israel have ever had, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses himself. And we have an example of this in the book of Psalms, Psalms 106, verse 23, says the following. Therefore he, Hashem, said that he would destroy them, speaking about the children of Israel, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he destroy them. So Moshe had to stand in the gap. He had to stand in the breach. And this is one of the roles that a leader is supposed to fulfill. But in order for the leader to be able to do this, those who are his followers or under his leadership have to lift him up. They have to support him. And when a leader such as Moses is humble and obedient, he is willing to sacrifice his own life 
In this situation, Moses put himself in the place of the children of Israel and interceded with Hashem on their behalf. This points us to the work of Messiah, who is to do the same thing. He is our advocate on our behalf before the Father. And this role of leadership, this humility and this willingness to stand in the gap, to stand in the breach, enabled Moses to receive from the loving grace of Hashem and hear his voice. We see in chapter 7, verse 89, a special manifestation of Hashem that is given to Moshe. It says, Now when Moses went into the tabernacle of meeting to speak with him, referring to Hashem, he heard the voice of one speaking to him from above the mercy seat that was on the Ark of the Testimony, from between the two cherubim. Thus he spoke to him. He heard, he obeyed the voice of Hashem. This voice of Hashem is a very specific manifestation of Hashem. Rabbeinu Bachia states on this particular verse that Moshe would hear the voice and that the Torah concludes this chapter with the words, He spoke directly to him, to Moses. He was not taken aback by being addressed by God. On the contrary, he engaged in conversation with God as attested to by God himself in Exodus 33, verse 11. Hashem would speak to Moses face to face, panim el panim, as a man would speak with his fellow. Now, Rabbi Nubachia is saying that this particular manifestation of Hashem, his voice, corresponds to this manifestation that Moses spoke to in Exodus 33, verse 11. In that verse, it says that Moshe spoke to Hashem face to face, panim el panim. But in verse 20 of that same chapter, Exodus 33, it says that, lo lirot et panai. He was not able to see the face of Hashem. In the translations that we have, we are missing the fullness of this text. In verse 11, it says, Panim el Panim. The word face there is spelled with a pe, nun, yud, and a mem. But in verse 20, the mem is no longer present. That is because this mem represents the Mashiach, the messenger of Hashem, who is the mediator between mankind and Hashem, our Heavenly Father. And this is why Moses was unable to see Hashem in his fullness had it not been through this messenger. And we have an example of the messenger of the face, prophetically speaking, in the Aaronic Blessing in chapter 6. If we turn to chapter 6, beginning in verse 22... It says, And Hashem spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak to Aharon and his son, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, Adonai bless you and keep you. Adonai make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, give you favor. Adonai make his face shine upon you. In the commentary, Sifre Bamidbar, it states, Rabbi Nathan says this refers to the light of the Shekhinah. This light that emanates from the face of Hashem is the Shekhinah, the divine presence, the manifestation of the divine presence of Hashem. As it is written in Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 2, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And if we turn to Isaiah 60 and we see who this chapter is referring to the light of Hashem, the Shekhinah that is illuminated upon the people of Israel, is none other than the Messiah, Yeshua HaNetzri. We see in verses 20 and 21, it says, Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself, for Hashem will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning shall be ended. 
Also, your people shall all be righteous. Who makes them righteous? They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. It says, Ve'amech kulam sadikim le'olam irshu aretz netzed mata'ai. This branch of Hashem, through whom his light shines upon the children of Israel, is the Netzer, the Nazarene, spoken of in Isaiah chapter 11, the descendant of King David, the Messiah. Through him, the Shekhinah of Hashem is given unto us. Continuing with the ironic blessing, the next verse says Hashem lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace shalom and the word that is used once again is Yisa Adonai Panavelecha Veyasem Necha Shalom again we have this word that the root is seen Aleph to lift up and this lifting up of the face of Hashem through His Shekhinah illuminates us and we are blessed with Shalom. The commentary in the Zohar speaking on the Shekhinah of Hashem in Parashat Vayechi says the following. We learned, Rabbi Yossi said, that there were two ministers, namely angels, messengers, under the holy throne of glory. The one by name of Mata dwells within the treasury of the temple. And here we are in exile and nothing remains to us but him who is of the nature of the Holy One. Blessed be he and impressed by the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he. This is the angel Metatron, Metatron whose name is as the name of his master as it is written of him. For my name is in him. Exodus 23:21. The angel mentioned is the Shekhinah, clothed and working through Metatron. In other words, the messenger of Adonai, who is given the authority of his name and the divine dwelling of Adonai in him, for he has placed his name in him, it is this messenger that is used by Hashem himself to give us his light, give us his shalom. And this messenger is none other than Messiah Yeshua. We have the example in the commentary of Sephorno on chapter 6, verse 26, saying that this verse, verse 26, speaking of lifting up his face upon you, Yisa Aronai Panavelecha, is giving us a vista of the world to come, which awaits us. The line is similar in essence to what David Hamelech said in Psalm 36, verse 10. With you is the fountain of life. By your light, we see light. Through the light of Hashem, we are able to see the light. And we know who the light of Hashem is. It's none other than Messiah. He is the light of the world. If we turn to the book of Yochanan, also known as the book of John, to chapter 12, verse 45, starting at verse 44, excuse me. It says, Then Yeshua cried out and said, He who believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me, Seize him who sent me, for he is the face. I have come as a light into the world. He is the light. That whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command 
what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. The words of Hashem are everlasting life, eternal life that is manifested through Yeshua Messiah. He is the light of Hashem. He is the messenger of his face. It is through him that we receive shalom, everlasting. And in chapter 6, verse 27, it says, So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Notice that he says, I will put my name on the children of Israel. Rabbi Nubakha comments on this. Let them place my name upon the children of Israel. God meant that as soon as the priest would mention God's name as part of the blessing, he would bless them all. Priests, Levites, and Israelites, all three divisions, seeing that God's name appeared in each of the three verses constituting the formula of the blessing. When we lift up our leaders and allow them to be used by Hashem and perform the functions that they have been called to perform, we are all blessed, even those who are being used as the vessels to give the blessing, for the blessing is of Hashem himself. So we are all equally sharing in this blessing when we work together. And we will finish with the book of Yochanan, John, chapter 17, verse 6. We'll start in verse 6. It says, Yeshua says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Verse 11, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Again, the ironic blessing speaks of keeping us and blessing us. It is only through the Messiah that we are truly kept and preserved in this perfect, complete shalom, this perfect peace. Verse 20 and all the way through 23, continuing in John chapter 17, says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. We are the ones who are to spread the word of Messiah, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us. We all have to submit to our leadership and support our leadership. And when it's our time to perform a function, Hashem will provide those who will help us and lift us up. And we will all be one and united in the service to Hashem. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. In order for the world to know that it was Adonai himself who sent his word, Yeshua HaMashiach, we have to be doing what we are supposed to be doing. For we are his servants and we have to reflect his character for his name is upon us especially those of us who belong to messiah yeshua it is our obligation to be obedient to lift up our leaders and to step in the gap to stand in the breach and be leaders ourselves just like moshe rabbeinu did just like yeshua messiah did and so we too must do we must carry up our leaders we must stand in the gap and we must honor the holy name of Hashem. Shabbat Shalom.